Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Mastering Digital Marketing Strategies for Success. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Rosa Lobaina, and I am the program coordinator for the Masters in Marketing program. Um, we uh, here at the Masters uh, in Marketing program, we have a 30 credit program focusing on three strategic pillars digital marketing, brand development, and marketing analytics. Um, we can offer a master's program in the duration of a 10, 16, or 20 months. And we have a fully online program uh, as well as a on-campus program with a hybrid option. Uh, merit scholarships are available for those who qualify. And I would like to make myself available to answer any questions that you may have. I will put uh, my pro uh, contact information on the chat along with some program information. Um, but for today, uh, the, um, the, the main uh, program is uh, the Mastering Digital Marketing Strategies for Success with um, Professor Gustavo Mosquera. And I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Mosquera now, uh, he is a professor here in the Masters of Science and Marketing program, and he has over 10 years of experience in branding, business development, and digital marketing, specializing in social media. As a marketer, he believes that authenticity is key, and Professor Mosquera is passionate about marketing. He loves being a part of an industry that is constantly evolving. However, a constant evolution does imply constant change, which represents a challenge for all of us as marketers. Uh, in today's session, Professor Mosquera will discuss how to master digital marketing and its ever-changing landscape with creative and strategic ways to achieve the desired results. Now, before I hand the mic over to Professor Mosquera, I'd like to let you know that we are recording today's session. Uh, we have also enabled um, closed caption, and we will be holding a Q&A session at the end. Uh, now, without further ado, here is Professor Mosquera, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your seminar. Thank you so much, Rosa, for that wonderful uh, introduction. Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, one of the six principles of persuasion of Robert Cialdini uh, account for um, 
credibility. And then uh, one of the rules that they say is that others should introduce you that way you increase your credibility. So thank you for doing that. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, that, 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 was, that was a great introduction. I am glad to, to, to know that there are more than 100 participants so far in this session. I am thrilled, I am excited, I am honored to be, uh, to, to be teaching in this program. And I'm honored to, to share with you the next 50 minutes um, or so, um, and then talking, discussing, debating a little bit of what digital marketing is. And then of course, some strategies uh, for, you know, to set all of you for success. Um, as Rosa mentioned, I have over 10 years of experience and I've been teaching in this program for more than six years now. Um, I, I teach not only digital marketing, but I also teach social media marketing and marketing analytics. And then even though Rosa did kind of a great uh, introduction, a great presentation of who I am, I would like to let you know that I, before I became an, an, a marketer, I was an accountant. So then if you have ever been, or if you have ever worked with an accountant, you know that it's all about keeping, you know, the books controlled, expenses controlled, um, budget, so on and so forth. And then if you go to a classroom, just like this particular classroom, it's all about cutting costs, cutting costs, cutting costs. I mean, not, not specifically, but just joking. When you go to a marketing classroom, it was back in the days when I was studying, it was all about spending money and spending money and spending money. And then you say, wait a minute, when you spend money, when you invest money, when you invest some money within your marketing efforts, the right question to ask ourselves is, well, how do I get my money back? If I am going to create a TV marketing campaign, a social media marketing campaign, um, you know, to invest some money, creating some content, how do I get my money back? We have to think about return on investment. So then I learned when I was learning about marketing, I always had these questions in mind, right? So if I am going to invest money, how is it that this TV campaign, how is it that this social media marketing campaign, how is it that all these efforts will help me um, increase my return on investment, increase my revenue, increase my profit, and hopefully increase my margin for product as well. So then that's what I would like to share my screen right now. And today we're going to talk about certain things regarding just this. Um, allow me to share full screen and now, I am going to go over here. By the way, um, if at some point, I would like to point out, if at some point you want to, um, you know, you have a comment, a question, even though we're going to have a, a Q&A at the end of the session, please feel free to use the chat. I will jump back and forth uh, from the presentation to the chat, from the chat to the presentation. So um, again, I'm going to share my screen right over here and let you know about this. Great. Hopefully you can see my screen, my screen over here, digital marketing successful strategies include a trigger to action. And why am I going to talk about trigger to action? Because we have to understand that based on the marketing definition, our goal is to satisfy needs and wants, right? So if we want to satisfy customer needs and wants, well, one of the things that we have to do is get them interested first. First, you need to know my, first, you need to know my brand. After you know, you know my brand, then you need to be interested in my product. Then you need to, we need to increase the desire, create the desire um, of, you know, push my product or experiencing my service and then at the end of the day I want you to take action but they will take action if we place an external trigger in front of them now I want to start this conversation not like really deep in what marketing is or isn't but I want to to talk about us to talk about how do we consume how do we experience the digital environment the digital world nowadays now back in 2011 an university study suggested that people check their phones 34 times per day. However, at the same time, back in 2011, industry insiders believed that the number was closer to 150 daily sessions. Now, let me ask all of you, all 116 participants, if I have to ask you, if you have to answer how many times you check your phone on a daily basis, what will be your answer? Now, if you go to your phone and then you go to settings and then you go to the pickups, some of you will say, well, 50, 100, 150, or just like some of my students, they say, well, by, by noon, they have checked their phones 200, 300, and 400 times per day. I see that you're using the chat and some of you are saying 50, 250, hundreds of time, over 100, that's great. Now, 
And the, the, the question that I keep on asking myself is, well, why are we hooked to our phones if we estimate uh, 60 seconds sessions, right? So one minute per session. And then you say that you are spending 240 or 120 times uh, per day in your phone. You'll say, well, I'm spending two hours, three hours, four hours, even five hours per day using my phone. So then can we... Can I use my phone uh, a little bit less? Can I use my time even better? Why do I keep on using my phone? The real answer is the fear of missing out. But the, the fear of missing out doesn't look like a fear to ghosts, a fear to spiders, or fear to snakes. It, it, that fear looks more like you're scrolling down in the middle of the night and then you're like one more, one more, one more. At some point you feel, well, it should be time to stop. And then before you stop, you say one more, one more, and one more. And the question is why our brain, why us? Why do we keep on doing that? And then you say, well, it might be because at some point, right? You are, what if the next post, what if the next piece of content is one that I will like, is one that I should know, is one that I shouldn't miss? So then when it comes to, when it comes to um, digital marketing and when it comes to social media marketing, we need to understand that we keep on using these mobile devices. We keep on interacting digitally with, um, with the internet, with uh, search engines, with social media apps and apps overall, just because of our habit to use these phones. Now, what's the trigger? What happens when, when there are no notifications, right? Why, do we, why are we hooked? If I ask you, and I, 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 I please ask you to use the chat and then tell me, why do you think you use your phone hundreds of times on a daily basis? Some of you, I know you will say, well, um, Professor Mascara, I think that I use my phone because I work with it. So then I check my emails. Um, I receive phone calls. I sometimes play video games. I check social media. So then Natalia, who is using the chat, says, well, it's out of habit. Dopamine rush appears each time. It's an addiction, boredom sometimes. I like that because sometimes we do that. Indira says, well, it's because of shopping. And then that's quite right. It's convenient for all of us. I mean, you can work with it. You can connect with your, um, you know, social, with society overall, whether that's family, friends, or, you know, people that you might know. Um, you can shop online, it's convenient for us. But then every single time, what we don't realize is that every single time we check our phones, right? Every single time we receive a notification, what happens, and I'm going to share, I mean, I'm a professor, so, so I'm going to do this, uh, sharing the whiteboard. So what happens is imagine this is you on a regular basis. So every single time you receive a notification, what is going to happen is that your level of dopamine and oxytocin goes up, right? For just a second. And then if you don't believe me, think about just, I won't ask you to close your eyes, but then if you, if you close your eyes or if you really think about the moment at which you receive a notification, let's say that your phone is upside down in front of you. Let's say that your phone is in your pocket. Let's say that your phone is in your purse. And then at some point of this you know, workshop, what is going to happen is you receive one, two or three notifications. But because you are so you know, focused in learning the most out of these 15 minutes, you'll be like, all right, I'm not going to check my phone. Now, when you receive the notification, that second, you feel somewhat excited. So then you are releasing dopamine and oxytocin. So then over here, I'm going to use the letter D for dopamine, O for oxytocin. And then those are related, both dopamine and oxytocin are related to and those are hormones of, that, that are related to happiness, happiness and love. So then you say, well, if every time I receive a notification, my body releases dopamine and my body releases oxytocin, and then my levels of happiness and love are, you know, higher than what's a problem. And, and it's not the, like I'm a hater and I don't want you to be happy and I don't want you to feel loved. No, not at all. The problem is not the presence of that particular um, hormone. The problem is that we are getting used, right? And this is exactly why I am not a graphic designer and I'm a marketer. This is what happens. Now we're used 
to be right over here, right? So what happens when you don't receive a notification? What happens when you don't receive a social media interaction? What happens when you don't receive a phone call in you know, a certain period of time? What happens when you don't receive an email in a certain period of time? Then we start feeling like, all right, now we are back to normal, but this doesn't feel normal anymore. Now, normal feels like I am missing something. The habit now is to go back to the phone and then you keep on checking what you were checking. I know that it has happened to you plenty of times because it has happened to me plenty of times, right? The problem is when you go, uh, when you are checking your phone and then at some point you, you put your phone away and five minutes later, you're again checking your phone, the same apps, even though you didn't receive a notification, well, it's a habit. And then as, a, you know, as marketers in marketing, what we want is you know, habit forming products, which means that consumers will keep consuming our product over and over and then it becomes a habit. Now, a habit by definition is an automatic behavior triggered by situational cues or things we do with little or no conscious thought at all. So statistics show that 95% of the, decision, the decisions we make as consumers are unconscious. I wouldn't say they are unconscious, um, uh, but at subconscious, which means um, we have solved the problem the same way many times we are okay with the solution now without so let's say that you're sleepy so then every single time you're sleepy you drink coffee so then whenever you say well if i am sleepy i am going to drink coffee how do i solve the problem do i make the coffee on my own do i ask someone else do i go to starbucks do i go to dunkin donuts how much money am, am i going to spend so then you answer all those questions over and over and over until it becomes a habit so then we want to create habit forming products and we want to answer all of those questions to our consumers right so then if we want to create habit forming products we need to understand the definition of a trigger because near agile near agile sorry if i mispronounced his name n i r um it's his his name and then his last name is e y a l um he, in his book, Hook, defines a process by which we create habit-forming products. And the first thing that we need to be aware of is that we need to place external triggers. The notification by which we release dopamine and oxytocin uh, triggers, that's an external trigger that will trigger something internal. And that internal thing, it's dopamine and oxytocin. And that emotion, it's, it's powerful enough so that we are going to perform an action, which is we're going to check our phones. After we check our phones, we will invest a time, we will invest some effort with your brand. So then what we want is to place a call to action. And a call to action doesn't look like, you know, a book now call to action button in a in a digital marketing in a in a in a digital website that might be the case but those are not the only call to actions so then we have to define internal triggers which is a connection between an emotion and an action and think about it when you don't know a brand when you have never heard about a brand what type of content should will actually pull you into that brand Oh, you would say, well, the type of content that will excite me, the type of content that will inspire me, the type of content that will make me feel something that I'm related to that brand. Actually, nowadays we talk about something that is called crowd culture. So then different from traditional media, different from what we were doing back in the 1990s, different from branded, branded content that was, you know, um, Typical, when in, in TV campaigns back in the 1990s, early 2000s, nowadays we talk about crowd culture, which means I need to feel empathy with what, what I'm seeing. I need to feel that I am part of that brand and that the brand is part of my conversation. So then digital media allowed us you know, to communicate at higher speed with, 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 um, with our potential consumers. And then it also allows us to reach more audience more segments and more personas. But we have to be smart about this because that represents as well a challenge to us. What type of content should I create? 
I need to join the conversation. And I need to join the conversation, not only to speak, but also to listen and reply. Remember, it's a conversation different from a radio campaign, different from you know a billboard, different from a TV campaign. It's not a message that I will broadcast. And once I broadcast the message, boom, I'm done. No, sir. What we're doing here is we are creating bite-sized content. When it comes to digital marketing, what we're doing is we're creating bite-sized content so that we spark something, we spark an emotion, and then that emotion will lead to an interaction between the potential consumer and the brand. So then we have multiple external triggers. As brands, as companies, as entrepreneurs, as personal brands, we can create different external triggers. So you have paid triggers, earned triggers, relationship triggers, and own triggers. One of the examples that I like the most to explain external triggers are, I don't know if you remember, and I'm very proud to say, I never played Candy Crush. But I know that if I have 128 participants as of now in this session, some of you played Candy Crush. And some of you know what I'm talking about. When it comes to paid triggers, every single time you log into Facebook, you had promotions all over the place. You have promotions through social media, letting you know and encouraging you to play this particular game. Now, you have as well earned triggers. Others were talking about this game. Others were talking about, oh, I'm in level this, I'm in level that. And then it generated some kind of uh, curiosity gap in which we'll, we, we felt, hey, I want to know what is it with this game? Why everybody's playing this game? Should I play this game? Will I have fun with this game? I feel like I am missing the fun part of this conversation. You had as well relationship triggers. And then when it comes to relationship triggers, you need to understand, well, this is where you invite friends. And if you don't do so because you want to invite some friends, well, Candy Crush was smart enough to Make it as if you cannot play anymore because you don't have an extra life or extra time to play. If you invite friends, then we will give you extra time. Then we will give you extra life. So then people kept on inviting you or and kept on inviting me every single day to play and play and play because they run out of lives, because they run out of time to keep on playing. And then sometimes you had random notifications. So then you were just, you know, jogging around in your phone or in Facebook or in any, in any other social media, and then suddenly you had random notifications. So come and play. What I mean by this, if you understand external triggers, we need to understand, all right, so how can I design? How can I create an external trigger that will generate an emotion powerful enough so that potential customers, they perform an action, they act, they show interest in my brand. They leave a comment on social media. They click and go to my website. They go and fill a form and then I generate a lead. How can we create that external trigger? Before we, we jump into creating external triggers, we need to understand that because we're talking about marketing and then nowadays in 2023, we're talking about customer-centered strategies where, where the customer is the center of our strategies, we have to start there. Who is the customer? Who are they? How, why do they buy? What's their, their decision criteria, right? And then it is, it is something very important that we have to discuss. If I ask you, I have like 128 now uh, participants. I want to ask you, if, if I ask, for example, how do you buy shampoo? And I would like to hear from my female audience over here. How do you buy shampoo? What's the process by which you buy a particular product just like shampoo? Some of you will say, well, uh, professor, you know what? I do, I shop online. I'll go to Amazon. I'll go to, you know, some beauty websites. I will select the product based on this, this, and that, and then I'll just order the product. And that might be right. Some of you will say, well, before buying a shampoo, I will ask my stylist. I will ask my friend. I will ask someone that you trust. After that, you will go to a store. When you go to the store, you will smell the bottle of shampoo. You will not pay attention to the price, and then you will purchase the product. So when, what, what I mean by this is, and, and then if, if you, for example, if you ask me, Indira, I love it, it's hair salon, and then online ads, that's great. Also, 
the color of the package is attracting, says Jonathan. Mallory says, my family, um, wait a minute, go to Marshall's, buy best price and consider ingredients or look for the brand. So, so this is something that usually it comes to the conversation. It jumps into the conversation. Ingredients. If you ask me, Gustavo, Professor Mosquera over here about how do you wear shampoo, I will never pay attention to the ingredients. But for some of you, it's important. So then what you what we usually miss is why do we buy a shampoo where do when do you identify the need to buy a shampoo well when i identify the need it might be different from when you identify a need so then for example if i ask you you might say well i just want a different one and then in fact i've heard some answers to this question saying well i have one shampoo for when i go out when it's a special occasion i have shampoo for you know daily usage i have multiple shampoos if you ask me when i run out of shampoos then i go buy a new one. So then it's quite important that we, we know, we understand when our consumers identify an issue. Because if you ask, and, and this is statistically speaking, I'm not saying that it's, uh, that it's uh, all cases are like this, but then statistically speaking, females will have two, three, and four bottles of shampoo, while men will have one, max two bottles of shampoo. So then usually we don't need to have multiple. Um, women will uh, like to have multiple. So then they identify identify an issue, and then they go and research for solutions. And why do, why do we need to understand? Why do we need to ask our potential customers? Why do we need to observe our potential customers? Why do we need to do that marketing research, which um, I, I wish my uh, fellow professor over here, Jackie Tannenbaum, was with me, because she will discuss marketing research like no one else, right? So then you have to identify an issue and then research for solutions. And then why is this important? And not only it will give you put powerful insights about the consumer, but also it will let you know when and where is the right time to reach that consumer, when that consumer is looking for a solution and where that consumer is going to look for a solution. If that's on YouTube, because they watch, you know, YouTube tutorials about shampoos, well, that might be, that might be the place to be. Um, so then you might be wasting money on Instagram or Facebook, or maybe they go to TikTok. So then you got to be on TikTok. Maybe they, they don't go there because you're, reach, you're reaching a particular segment that they don't use this platform. So what platform, platform or platforms do they use? And that's when you will say, well, it's not only about the message. It's also about when I deliver the message and where I will deliver that message. So then whenever you're researching for solutions, let's say that you're online researching for solutions, you will study alternative products, right? So then you say, okay, so then there's always this question when you're about to select a new product, I'm about to buy a new product. And then you think, well, should I buy, should I really buy this product or should I keep on using one that already solved my problem before? Meaning, should I use one that I already know? Should I use one that I already know it works and it works for me? So then it all comes down to the fourth step, which is the decision criteria. Some of you will pay attention to the ingredients. Some of you will pay attention to the smell. Some of you will pay attention to the package. But then we all have a decision criteria. If you ask me, I'll pay attention to, hey, package and price, at least when it comes to shampoo, right? But when it comes to other products, such as, I don't know, purchasing a new bicycle, then I have a different decision criteria. Then it's not about price, then it's about quality. So then we need to understand what's the decision criteria of our consumer. I won't be able to create a successful marketing strategy if I don't understand how my customer buys, why they buy, where they buy, and when they buy. So then if we are able to understand, if we're able to collect information about the customer journey, right, then get to know when they identify an issue, when, they when and where they research for a solution. How is it that, or when it comes to the, this comparison where, where they study alternative products, well, who is my competition? And then how and why will they buy the product, then you will have enough information to create powerful and successful marketing strategies. But then of course, uh, it all comes down to what kind of need I am going to satisfy. Is it physiological needs? Is it safety needs? Is it belongingness and love, esteem needs or self-actualization? This is, and, and this, this, part, this particular conversation leads me to um, uh, this, this slide that I had over here, which is, well, we need to define market. 
this, I know that there are 124 uh, people over here as of now. And then I want to probably expose you to the definition of marketing, because this is something that usually happens to me when I'm teaching and I ask you, Hey, what, what comes to your mind whenever you, um, Jonathan, yes, it applies to business as well. I can definitely go back to, to these slides. So then what happens when, when I ask you, what comes to your mind? Whenever I ask you the question, what is marketing, right? Some of you, and most of you actually, will answer, well, marketing is all about communicating. It's all about advertising. It's all about communication. And while marketing includes and involves a little bit of you know, communication, a little bit of promotion, a little bit of advertising, we have to think as well that marketing first and foremost is a set of tools and institutions that will help you create, deliver, communicate and establish value. So then we are talking about value. And if, if I repeat those four again, create value, deliver value, establish value and communicate value, we're talking about the four Ps. So then marketing is a set of tools and institutions that will help you improve product, price, place and promotion in order to satisfy customer needs and wants. So then all of this, what we're doing over here, when we promote ourselves, when we advertise ourselves, when we improve the product, when we you know, um, create A-B tests with our price or with our communication efforts, all of those efforts, what, what we are trying to do as much as possible is to satisfy customer needs and wants. So then if we go back to the shampoo, if we, if we for example, touch on different examples such as Apple, such as, you know, hey, when it comes to why do we buy $1,000 phones, you, you, might, you might ask yourself, well, why do we buy $1,000 phone? $900, $800, you know, $1,200. Why do we keep on spending this amount of money? And then you say, well, it's not only about the fact that I need to communicate, the need is that I need to communicate. I want an iPhone, I want a, a smartphone and a Samsung, whatever it is. So maybe the need is you need to eat, I want a pizza. I mean, while you should have a salad or something like that. So then we need to understand what's the need. The need is that you need to communicate. Now, if you can point out the difference between needs and wants, you will know, hey, this is the need that I'm satisfying. This is how I create the desire to buy my product. So then we are going to uh, talk about, no, I'm going to skip this uh, and then go over the hook model. So we want to create triggers, whether that's with content, tar different touch points that will generate an emotion in my consumer that will generate an action. That action will include a variable reward until they're ready to invest in our product, okay? So then how does this look when it comes to digital marketing? When it comes to digital marketing, we need to talk, well, we said that's marketing. We want to satisfy customer needs and wants. There is traditional marketing, there is digital marketing. So then when it comes to digital marketing, we can point out different um, ways to, um, different ways to persuade, different ways to communicate, different ways to deliver that value. So then we're going to talk about websites, search engine optimization. Um, we can talk about Google ads. We can talk about uh, social media marketing. And then within social media marketing, we can talk about multiple strategies such as user-generated content, influencer marketing, content marketing, so on and so forth. The digital marketing universe is huge. It's huge. But then as in any other marketing plan, as in any other marketing plan, we have to go over five steps. So then whenever you create a digital marketing plan, you need to first and foremost be aware be clear of your marketing objectives. So then, and this is kind of a uh, this is kind of a problem that I've seen, a situation that I've seen a lot when it comes to nowadays. And, and then students come back to me, and then whenever they are working, they will send me an email. Hey, professor, uh, we created this social media marketing campaign to create to generate awareness, but we were not able to sell one product. And I'm like, all right. Um, if your goal is to generate awareness, careful with the words. If your goal is to generate awareness, which if you think about, well, awareness in terms of analytics, in terms of metrics, what you're trying to do is increase reach, increase impressions, 
increase, you know, whether that's organic reach or paid reach. So then if you are trying to, you know, expose yourself to as many people as possible, then why were you expecting as a result of your campaign conversions? If we understand that when it comes to digital marketing, we talk about inbound marketing and not outbound marketing, which, which means I want to pull people in, I want to pull users in, then I want to have awareness strategies, consideration strategies, and conversion strategies. I don't know if you're aware of the history of marketing, but then it all started somewhere around the 1920s, right? Where they had a, where, where, where they were living, I wasn't alive, where, where they were living, um, the manufacturing era. Meaning after the war, after the World War, um, we, some people had enough money to invest. Some people had enough money to manufacture products. Um, demand was high, offer was low. So basically every single thing that they were producing, people were buying those products. And that was great. At some point we switched, right? Now offer was as high as demand. So then at some point, those business owners, they turn around and then they say, wait a minute, we have a lot of inventory right there. We, we used to sell all of those products. What's going on? And then some, someone said, hey, you know what? Um, people now prefer product B rather than product A. They prefer the product of, your, of the competition rather than our product. So then we are not selling as much. So then what was the solution? All right, we, they hired some people and then they say, hey, look, I need you to push these products out of my uh, warehouse and I need you to sell and sell and sell. And then the sales era came, right? So then we were in a sales era. We were selling and selling and selling, pushing products away. At some point, those salesmen, they came back and then they say, wait a minute. Now consumers want, if we advertise in the you know newspapers or in the radio or whatever it was, um, then it's easier for us to sell. All right, great. Um, now, consumers are asking for a bigger size or a smaller size or color uh, blue or color red or whatever it might be. So then you say, okay. So then for the first time in history, we were considering the consumer's feedback to take decisions. And then at that point, the marketing definition was born. So from a manufacturing oriented era to a sales oriented era to a marketing oriented era where we were collecting information about the consumer and then say, well, if we're doing all this work is to satisfy you. So if you tell us what you want, we can modify the product and then uh, what we expect in return is higher sales, right? So then that happened. Marketing was born and then Philip Cutler defined the four piece. Philip Cutler as known as the father of marketing. Um, he defined the marketing mix or the four piece, product, price, place, and promotion. Well, granted, that was traditional marketing marketing. At some point in the 1990s with the you know internet and then in 1990, 1994, 1995 uh, when cookies were born to put it in a way, now we could collect information about consumers. Now it wasn't just like oh we place the product and someone will buy the product. Now with the internet what changed uh, and then what, what drove this, this digital marketing era, this information era, this analytics era is that now we can collect information about every single person that visits my website, that buys my product, that shows interest in my product. And then with digital, the game, the marketing game changes. Now it's easier to collect data with big data. It's easier to identify audiences. It's different to identify segments within those audiences. And it's different and it's, it's different. Um, and then of course it's an optimized process how to identify that buyer persona. Now, it plays a challenge as well because we have to create content. And instead of just creating a TV commercial, we place the TV commercial and that's it, boom, branded content. Now we have to start a conversation, branding, it's all about content marketing, it's all about creating content with certain consistency. And then you place that content to initiate a conversation and to manage the flow of that conversation. If you think about it, a social media post will trigger, it's a trigger. And that trigger hopefully will get people talking about you. Positive. That's, that's a goal. So then once they talk to you, you should be able to respond. You should be able to add value. You should be able to solve their needs, right? And then that way they will click, they will follow you they will click on the website and hopefully at some point they will buy your product. So then we have to pay attention because digital marketing, it includes 
measurement, it includes honest management, it includes content marketing, and then of course, it includes choosing the right channel and the right platform. And then when, when you think about that, choosing the right audience, how can we do that? Well, you have multiple, when it comes to digital marketing, you have multiple platforms. We, we can talk about apps over here. We can talk about social media over here. We can talk about websites. And then whenever you create a website, you can do so within different platforms. But all of them nowadays, they allow you to collect information about your audience, period. And then you say, well, um, and then how come, like, what's the main takeaway of, of like there, professor? Uh, of course, this is part of a eight weeks class that I teach over here uh, when it comes to digital marketing and social media marketing. But now granted, one of the things that I can say when it comes to digital marketing is think about how data can help you optimize your digital marketing strategy. So what I'm going to say with this is that Nowadays, we have digital marketing. I told you it's not about push strategies, so not pushing products away of the company, but I want to pull consumers into my company and then they will buy the product. So then what we're going to do with that, what I mean by that is an inbound marketing process where at least when we, and if you look at this in, in you know, using Google or whatever, you'll find at least three different um, stages. You have the awareness stage, you have the uh, consideration stage, and then you have the conversion stage. So then whenever you have these three stages, what I mean by this is, well, you have to increase your reach. So then the expected results of an awareness campaign is higher reach, less conversions, which is okay. Then Let's say that to, to increase awareness, use the social media marketing campaign. Then you know that some of those that were exposed to your ad, some, a percentage will click and go to your website. Well, that's great because now we're talking about from awareness to consideration, some of them will go to your website. Great. But then your website might have so many layers. It might be the homepage. It might be the product page. It might be, you know, homepage, product page, and then a checkout page, and then thank you page. So then it's a long process before they convert. So then we have to be aware of that particular process. I am going to, for the sake of this conversation, put over here multiple sources that, that we can use. And at some point, and I'm going to use here, well, let's say website, product page, then after product page, checkout page, and then after checkout page, I am going to use thank you page, all right? So then if you think about it that way, you have over here, website so that's when you go to the landing page over here you have the product page so then after going to the product page and then let's assume that you find something interesting or what you were looking for you go to the checkout page let's assume that you are not that kind of person that when when you go to the you know to the product page you're like oh um this is in the checkout this is in the cart i added the product to the cart um but I shouldn't be buying this. So then you go out. So then you have add to cart and then uh, check out. And last but not least, let me put this like this, check out. And then last but not least, you have the thank you page and the delivery. So thank uh, you and then delivery. All right, so great. So then you have that. What happened with the sources right over here, which is the point that I want to, point that I want to get right over here. You have multiple sources that you can pull people into your strategy. And then you say, well, what are you talking about? What kind of sources? I know that nowadays the common answer is social media, boom. So then we can create content organically or we can boost posts, which I don't recommend. Don't boost posts, just try to, you know, promote ads, but using the right tools, such as business.facebook.com, if we're talking about Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp. So then we have, well, people might be, if we're talking about a business, people might be returners. So then after they purchase your product, uh, right? They returned to your, um, they return to your website. They return to your brand. They are, they follow your brand. They're loyal to, to your brand and they will return at some point. Well, that's great because what's going on is this is happening. 
And then what I like about this process is that when we think about this, when we think about this relationship with the customer, I believe we're thinking about marketing because marketing is building a long-term relationship with that customer. It's not about just one a one-time sale, right? That was kind of the, the sales months mindset back in 1980s, 19, 1980s, 1990s. Nowadays, we're talking about building long-term relationships. It's way more expensive, okay? to create and to build and to, and to acquire a new customers than to retain and maintain a, a current customer. So then some of them will return. Um, some of them, we can reach them directly. And then when it comes to direct, the direct source, we're going to have direct source such as, hey, I can place a, a direct mail campaign to your place uh, or to the address that I have from you, or I can send you an email, I can send you a text message, I can send you, I can give you a phone call, and then it can reach out to you directly. We have some of them might be paid, right? So then if you have paid campaigns, we can talk about email marketing paid campaigns, we can talk about social media marketing paid campaigns, and we can talk about viral as well. Viral, word of mouth, um, viral coefficient, multiple names, but all of them refer to the same thing in which we want people to talk about you, to give positive reviews uh, about you to others, and then that way they will influence others to come back. So then when we see this like this, it's, it's, it, it's kind of self-explanatory where you say, oh, okay. So now content marketing, right? If I am going to create content is different, the content that I create for my awareness campaign, in which I want to reach out to people, persuade people, build an emotional connection with them so that they feel some, somehow um, you know, related to the company. They feel that I will solve their problem. They feel that I will satisfy their need and wants, and then they want to know more. If you are able to generate that interest if you are able to say, well, I want to know more, then and only then they will go from a social media post to your profile to your website, right? So we're talking about a process called IDA. Where, oh, sorry about that. I had the color in white. So here, awareness, right? Uh, awareness, interest desire, and action. So then if you think about bite-sized content, what we're going to do is we're going to create con uh, content to generate awareness, content to increase interest, content to persuade co potential consumers to generate desire, and last but not least, a gentle push to generate action. Now, if we go back to that moment at which I ask you, hey, tell me about the definition of marketing, and some of you thought about promotion, I will say, well, a promotion is right, right over here. Once you're interested in the product, once you know the product, once you want, hey, I want the product, but it's that I added the product to the cart and I left the journey, right? And then you have that information because you have Google Analytics and you have other apps that will help you collect that information. If you're using Shopify, Shopify will give you that information. Those who abandoned the journey, those who added something to the cart and abandoned the journey, now I can create a custom message for you. And what will that message say? Well, here is, it's a limited offer. You have a 10 or 20% discount, $5 for you, just because blah, blah, blah. But then it's an incentive to push that sale. But if you think about that incentive at the very beginning of the journey, then it won't work because I don't know who you are. I don't know who's your brand. I don't know if you will, you know, um, solve my problem. I don't know if you understand me. I don't know, like I am not related to you. So then first and foremost, we create one type of content to generate awareness. And then we keep on creating content, understanding who the customer is and where they are in that bias journey. Right. Um, I want to be mindful of your time, and I and I said this at the very beginning. Um, uh, so I, I will just just try to close in the next uh, five or ten minutes. We have audience platforms. We can connect to our audience using these platforms. Now, what we want to do is 
identify audiences and manage the contact strategy and corresponding conversation flow with these consumers. Meaning, well, the website is your brick and mortar store, right? But in the digital landscape, well, your website is your store. We need other sources to make people come to your store. We know that some of them will search online, then we need to understand how to create search uh, ads. We need to know how to create display ads. Some of them will use social media. We need to understand how to create social media marketing strategies. And then when it comes to social media marketing strategies, the answer is no, it's not about self-promotion and it's not about being you know, present in every single app it's being present in the right app where your consumer is. And not only where your consumer is, but where your consumer is willing, the, the motivation, it's, it aligns with your objectives. Hey, it's different the Gustavo that is on Instagram. It's different from the Gustavo that is on LinkedIn. If that's the case with your audience, if that's the case with your segment, then you need to know where to put your efforts, where to invest your money so that you will receive in return a higher return on investment. Okay, so then be mindful that you have audiences, which is kind of, if you think about a big circle, you have audiences. So then let's say that your reach is only to the United States. Then within the United States, you have multiple and, and, and multiple uh, different segments or consumers, consumer segments. And then of course, once they go down the funnel, once they follow you, once they go to the website, now you can identify them. So for example, and I will use an example, how can I ident identify a persona and customize a, you know, a, a, a message for them? Think about when you go to nike.com, for example. If you go to nike.com, then let's say you're a man, then you go to the men's tab, and then you go to clothing, and then you're interested in a yellow t-shirt, right? And then you click on that product, but then you leave the journey. Well, now you know that that person is interested in a yellow shirt. It's now it's not about, now it's not about, you know, promoting the brand, inspiring you, telling, you know, placing uh, one of the just do it campaigns in front of you. It's all about a carousel or a sales campaign that places that product in front of you and other t-shirts that you might like. So then you're interested. So then you're just ready to buy. Then to give you a gentle push, to let you know about a sale that we have, to let you know about a discount that we have, so on and so forth. So then we need to turn data into information. And for me, this is what digital marketing is about and the challenge that some, a lot of people are missing out there. We want to turn data into information. We want to turn all the information into information that we can use to optimize our digital marketing strategy. If we learn how to create insights from that data, and, and that's a game changer when it comes to digital marketing, then we will create valuable insights. And based on those valuable insights, we will take better decisions. And then when we take better decisions, we will optimize the use of our budget. And therefore, we should at least increase our profit margin, return investment, and hopefully revenue as well. Um, guys, this is this is uh, what, I, what I wanted to uh, speak with you uh, today. Uh, it's been almost 50, 55 minutes with you. I know that we are scheduled to, to, to speak for one hour. I can be hours and hours. I did this from, this is an actual classroom at FIU. I wanted to show you, I don't know if you are from FIU or not, but I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, how um, one of our small uh, classrooms look like. This is, I've been teaching, not in this class, classroom, we have at least three buildings um, in the College of Business Complex, but, but then again, uh, hopefully this, this is uh, something that, that motivates you to, to come over here and then to learn more about digital marketing, social media marketing, and then branding digital and analytics overall. Um, thank you. This is, I'm going to open the room for, for Q and A for, for, you know, questions and answers. Uh, hopefully if you have some questions, you can, you can use the chat. You can, I don't know if you can unmute yourself, but if you, if you want, use, use the chat, ask a question, and we can be here for at least 10, 15 minutes uh, before we uh, close the webinar, if that sounds okay. 
Jonathan is the Q&A section is up. You can use the chat and I'll be here. Eric, thank you uh, for those kind words. You were amazing. You are, uh, all of you, you were kind of an amazing crowd. So interacting over here, that's that's what I like. Uh, Amy, uh, graduate of UCF here, and I appreciated listening to your classroom today. Then of course, all you're always welcome, Amy. And then try to, if again, if you're not planning to come over here, just connect with me online and then I can answer as many questions as you have. Um, Jonathan says, I'm going to ask a question right over here. He's in the chat, of course. Ale Noguera, thank you, thank you. Um, Sue, could you share some of the electives uh, we can choose from and how many electives do we take in the program? Um, that will be a question for Rosa. Um, again, I teach social media marketing and digital marketing. Um, then of course, I'm not the only professor that teaches uh, digital marketing, so then um, I'm pretty sure you will have in social media marketing. It depends on when you start, uh, if you have before digital marketing and what electives you can choose. But Rosa will be able to, to answer that, that question. I, I guess you'll do that in the chat. Uh, Jonathan, if I'm implementing an awareness strategy, what should I expect as a result? So I always, and, and this is a great question. I always think about metrics. I always think about analytics. I told you at the very beginning, I, I, I graduated as an accountant first and then I graduated as a marketer. So then as an accountant, my mind is always thinking about what's the result that I expect from this effort, right? So then an awareness campaign is a top of the funnel or an awareness strategy is a top of the funnel strategy. The top of the funnel is that, is that strategy on top, right? So then what you're looking is you want to increase the reach of your message. That's when, for example, Nike releases all those brand, all those um, commercials that inspire you, that you look at those commercials and you feel inspired, right? And then at some point you feel like sharing those commercials. It's all about inspiring. It's all about connecting. It's all about generating higher reach, meaning it's not only to my current customers, it's also to whoever is out there, right? and is related to this message. So then at some point, they will watch this message, they will watch this video, listen to this piece of content, and they will connect. What happens then? Well, your impressions will be higher, your, both your organic reach and paid reach will be higher, perhaps your profile visits and followers will be higher, and then hopefully what you can expect, it's higher clicks. So then from that source, whatever the source, whatever the source that you're using is, from that source, you're going to move all the way to clicks. But then after you generate the click, you cannot expect, I mean, it will be just a tiny percentage of those people reached who will buy a product. Then those who landed in the website, now it's time for you to do marketing. Now it's time for you to create a retargeting campaign. Hey, I know you were in my website. I know that you came from social media. I know that you came from Instagram. So most likely you watch this video, let me retarget you with another message. It's not now a time to inspire you. It's now time to tell you about our new collection. It's time to tell you about our new products. It's time to tell you about our new services, but step by step. So then again, from your question, you can expect higher impressions, higher reach, higher profile visits, higher clicks. Uh, Yasunari, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Absolutely, it's always my pleasure. Um, so Eric, where can, where can we connect with you? Well, that will be on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. You can look to me by Gustavo Mosquera, that's my name, or Prof Mosquera. Um, you can do that. And then of course you can send me a DM and then we can, we can chat. Uh, thank you for teaching in depth. I tried my best uh, teaching in depth in just one hour. It's kind of uh, a difficult task to do, but I tried my best. Uh, Shalisa, have you grad here? Great information. Thank you. Uh, go FIU, go Panthers. Uh, what other skills are digital marketers are recommended to acquire? Wow. Well, um, but let me tell you about the program, right? Because, because I teach over here. Um, we teach, at least when it comes to digital marketing, we encourage the students and, and we have actually plenty of assignments that will require you to complete SEO certifications, will require you to uh, know more about pay-per-click certifications, will require you to know about um, marketing analytics, Google analytics, social media marketing, content marketing, uh, the principles of persuasion. Jackie Tanamam does a great job when it comes to marketing research. So then all of those are, and then when it comes to digital marketing, you need to know, I will focus on analytics first. So how do you collect the data and optimize, optimize your marketing strategy based on data? Then when optimizing 
Tinder strategy, you should know. You should only you should know not only about marketing analytics, but also marketing research. After you know how to research, after you know how to do marketing analytics, then you can talk about user generated content, content marketing, uh, content creation, so on and so forth. Uh, Claude, uh, can we create content without any purpose to sell, to build credibility, just because we love the subject, service, or product? Does this come off as more um, athletic? Well, um, Claude, yes, you can definitely create content without any purpose to sell, but to build a community is, is a purpose. It's an objective. So if you, for example, you said that you love the subject or the topic that you're talking about, well, it means that you want to create a personal brand. So then if you're a personal brand and then you love the topic, you love the subject and you want to share your information, that means you want to, you know, portray yourself as a, as an industry leader and in whatever the topic is. So then coming from your passion, you want to share content. And then whenever you share content, what it's going to happen is at some point, people will start connecting with you. And then when people start connecting with you, you have to, you know, join the conversation, be part of the conversation. It's 50% talking, 50% listening. So then you will create your community. And at some point you will say, well, what do we do? Do we go to a, you know, over here, over there? Um, how can we, you know, do something with this community, with this information, uh, so on and so forth. So, but, but yes, creating a community is definitely one valid goal. Um, so, no, thank you, Martha. Thank you. I do appreciate it. The program includes AI for marketing. Yes, that I know at least three different classes and mine, it's one of them. We discuss different AI. I mean, not all of them because nowadays we have a vast um, you know, variety of, of artificial intelligence programs and softwares and, and apps that help you in marketing. But then, yes, we teach you how to how to do that. The curriculum for the MSM. Oh, thank you, Rosa. Uh, wow, a uh, lot of questions. So I think I will answer Mary's question. How would you say marketing uh, marketing and experience differs from marketing a physical product? Um, this is this is kind of I will answer this question, Mary, with a with an example that we had in, in the classroom this last Saturday, right? There was a, there was a group, it was their final project and they, were, uh, they created a social media marketing plan for one skin spa, okay? So then where, where usually people can go and, and then have some facials and things for, for their skins, manicure, pedicure, so on and so forth. Now, of course, it's, it's a service, what they're offering. And they, you know, suggested to let people know the price, people know the experience, people know blah, blah, blah. But then at some point we said, well, let's go back to the very basic because over here we're talking about influencer marketing campaign, which is good. User generated content campaign. So they had kind of a, they want to place a spot and then over here. So to make it easier to share your experience or to take a picture, to take a selfie and then consumers can share that um, online. That might be good. But then I kept on thinking, look, I said, well, one of the problems is that the personal, right, the human resource, usually when it comes to skin spas and manicure and pedicure, people, consumers, often female uh, consumers will, you know, trust the person more than the business. So if the person goes, the client will go as well. And I said, okay, so if that's the case, we need to think about the experience. The experience is not only a great place, right? Um, aesthetically speaking, a great design or someone that smiles to you whenever you come in. It's way more than that. It's how you feel whenever you experience that service. It's not only that that skin treatment or that manicure was, was kind of a perfect one. It's also about how you feel in that environment. So then if you keep on thinking about the emotional connection that you have with the business, then your, your job will be easy. Not that it will be easy, sorry, but it will be clear to you that your job as a business owner or as a marketing manager of that business is to promote, is to create a better experience and to communicate the emotional experience that you're going to have there. So it's a place where you're going to build memories with your daughter. So it's when your daughter is going to have her first manicure all together and then you will remember that forever. It's where you are going to go with your best friend and receive some treatments. And then as soon as you switch the scope, as soon as you are clear about that objective, you'll say, okay, now as a business, I can share, I, I am clear about what the experience means, what's the emotional, you know, what's the emotional, I would say bond with, with, um, with the business and the, between the business and the consumer. 
and then you will try to create that. So then whatever communication effort, whether that's website, social media, message, video, um, email marketing, whatever it is, you will try to communicate just that experience. So in simple words, how can you really, like when it comes to experience or service, how can you really help? How can you really communicate the value to the consumer? And to, to answer that question, think about the consumer. Think, if possible, as the consumer. Does the program cover content marketing? Yes, it does. I'm actually teach, I usually teach, and then I, I would like to show you over here. Um, I usually uh, bring one guest speaker, and then so we go over a little bit of lighting, a little bit of audio, a little bit of, um, you know, um, videography and photography. So then we have one or two classes about that. It's not, and, and I will have to say this, it's not a content creation program. So then meaning you will learn how to uh, write emails, you will learn how to blog, you will learn how to um, you know, create videos for personal brands, but it's not about production. So then if the question is, will I be able to produce a whole you know, um, short film when I'm out of the program? The answer is no. But will you be exposed to content creation in different forms? The answer is yes. Uh, bah, bah, bah. So thank you, Rosa, for sharing my LinkedIn. Uh, great energy during your presentation. Passion is something that I have, so thank you. I have a background in two degrees in architecture. I'm a visual person and would like to dive into marketing. And then you're welcome. Let me tell you, this program has been designed not only by us professors, but we have a panel of experts. We have a panel of industry experts, CEO, marketing managers from different companies, not only over here in Miami, but all over the US. And they tell us, hey, look, in the industry, this is a problem that we're having. You need to teach this. So then we are constantly evolving. And then we have people, you know, from different backgrounds. So Anthony, uh, Axel, you're definitely more than welcome. Just reach out to, to Rosa and she will give you more information. Uh, Shalisa, how can we apply this to real estate to, to since real estate is not always a multiple purchase type product? Well, relation, I mean, um, it, it depends, right? If you're asking me from a, um, real estate agent uh, standpoint, or if you're asking me from a real estate company um, standpoint, it will be marketed differently because from an agent standpoint, you want to build trust with that potential customer uh, and from a real estate. But, but then again, I mean, data. Uh, and then let me give you a, a brief example. You can create ads. And then whenever you create ads, you can select the interest of the person. So then let's say that you go to business.facebook.com, you create your business profile, you create your ads manager. And whenever you create your ad, you will say, well, I want to target those who are interested in purchasing a house from, you know, um, purchasing a house overall, whatever, uh, purchasing a house in Miami or in Western or in Fort Lauderdale or whatever it is. Well, you can target male or female or all of them. Um, you can target using, you know, a certain age range. You can target based on real estate interest um, in the next, in the, in the past 15 or 30 days so that you are not people who were interested a year ago and then only over here in Miami. So then that, that can be your strategy. So then you can definitely target people who are interested in real estate. Well, I mean, I, I'm talking about a house. It can be, you know, a commercial establishment, who knows? Uh, so then we'll need to know more about your example. What has you most excited for the future of marketing, introduction of AI? Um, definitely artificial intelligence is something that I believe it's going to change and it's going to shape the next um, era of marketing. Um, and, and that era of marketing is, is fueled by data. Um, if you think about if you think about AI, I think it's going to have more data than us than ever before. So think about a year and uh, we're in April. So a year and four months ago, uh, Meta, Mark Zuckerberg introduced the uh, Quest. Now we are in the Quest 2 and the Quest 2 Pro, something like that. So it's constantly evolving. Now, if you put those goggles, right? Can you imagine a custom experience for um, every single one of us? So I usually tell to my wife and I usually discuss this with my wife. I say, look, what about... If now online, uh, when it comes to online education and we are developing certain things, not ready, but there are certain ideas going around and developing that, can you imagine that instead of going into a Zoom session, we can all put some goggles and we're in a classroom. And then when it comes to the classroom, you have app screens all over the classroom because again, it's a digital classroom. And then every single one of you can um, see examples that are you know tailored to your interest. So if you're interested in real estate, you will see an, 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 an ad or, or an example about that. If you're interested in the sports industry, you will see an ad about that. And that will increase the experience. Now, while we are having a, a better online experience, now 
it's not that you are only receiving an experience, you're also contributing with your data. So then every single time you contribute with your data, what you engage with, what you search for, and so on and so forth, you are giving as well information to that particular company to uh, better know you and then better target you. So then yeah, artificial intelligence and data, I believe it's, it's uh, the next big thing about uh, marketing. Um, so Rosa answering questions about, uh, bah, 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 bah. perfect. All right, so I think I'm done with, uh, with questions. Um, I, I would like to thank you, it's 2, uh, 10 p.m. Uh, so I would like to thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have my contact information. If you need uh, something from me, uh, just connect with me. And definitely, I'm excited to see you, some of you over here, if not all of you over here. And then of course, uh, hopefully you will join our next um, session. Rosa, it's all yours now. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Let me uh, enable my video here. I hope you can see me. Um, thank you so much uh, for joining us this afternoon. We had a great session with uh, Professor Mosquera, and um, I have been receiving some um, chat uh, messages. I know we had a lot. Uh, if you guys did not get through, please go ahead and um, send me an email. I send the email through the chat. It's R-L-O-B-A-I-N-A -A at FIU.edu, and I'll be more than glad to answer all of your program-related questions. Um, if uh, we're ready, then I think it's time to let you get back to uh, your day today, and we want to wish you a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks again. Bye-bye.